Hello everyone, I'm Brian Pao and today I'm going to take you through a quick explanation of what I'm doing in Japan. As you may know, the Center for Materials Crystallography is sending several people abroad to live at prominent scientific installations. The goal of this expedition is to initiate and maintain interaction with other groups abroad and to facilitate access to otherwise restricted experimental stations. I'm among the first to be sent abroad. I'm currently situated in Japan at the Spring 8 synchrotron, the largest and most powerful X-ray synchrotron in the world. Here I am working with the Riken group, one of the two major groups working at Spring 8. They own seven, seven experimental stations at Spring 8, which are normally unavailable to outside researchers. One of these is a powerful small angle X-ray scattering beamline. With this beamline and this technique, I am helping the in-situ group of the CMC by studying particle growth under supercritical conditions. So how does this technique work? Starting from an X-ray source, the X-ray beam is subsequently cut by the collimator into a nice parallel beam. When this beam falls onto the nanostructure in the sample, the electron density differences of the sample cause a small fraction of the radiation to be scattered. To prevent the main beam from damaging the detector, the beam stop is designed to cut away the, the main beam and to let the scattered radiation pass through. The scattered radiation will then fall onto the detector, uh, which will count the radiation. So what will we see in the detector? What we see on the detector is the amplitude of the Fourier transform of the shape in the beam. So a sphere would show up as an oscillating function as shown here on the right. In case of polydispersity, uh, we would see a superposition of scattering patterns leading to a smooth function as shown here. If we would have aligned elongated objects in our beam, we would get an anisotropic scattering pattern as shown here. Classical analysis methods often revolve around fitting the scattering pattern to that of polydispersed known objects, for example a sphere. This approach becomes more challenging, however, with more complex shapes, as more numerical integrations are required. We can apply this method to one of our measurements, resulting in good agreement between the data and the model. We can then obtain information about agglomeration and particle size distributions, assuming a spherical shape a Schultz size distribution and fractal agglomeration behavior. An alternative method involves inverse Fourier transformation. By thus transforming the data, we obtain a distance distribution function representing all of the information present in our data in real space. It is now more clear that small angle scattering patterns only contain a limited amount of information. The challenge is then to use suitable models to extract information on particle shape and polydispersity. New methods are appearing that can identify the most likely combination of the two based on the inverse Fourier transform. Experimentally, I will be using this in situ stage shown here, which uses a sapphire capillary as a reaction vessel. This capillary is transparent to X-rays, meaning that we can easily measure through it. This sapphire tube is shown here, uh, with a thermocouple at one end and the reaction mixture in it. The intention is to automate this setup using this controller box and suitable software. Um, a reasonable amount of automation has already been achieved uh, for the pumps and uh, the pressurization routine. With this methodology and upcoming experiments, we should be able to determine whether particle growth in supercritical fluids behaves more like this, where nucleation is the rate-limiting step, or like this, where growth is the rate-limiting rate step. We will also be able to tell you the particle polydispersity and link this polydispersity to experimental conditions. With this information, we will have the tools to create finely tuned particle sizes, essential for most applications of nanoparticles. Thank you very much for your attention.